But the question is, why did Bell feel the need to upgrade it? The Bell 505 had its first flight in November of 2014 with a sporty new design, a brand new interior, a glass cockpit, its aim was to replace the super popular Bell 206. But we're gonna talk about it and see if it really is a replacement for the 206. And the Bell 206 was incredibly popular with over 8,000 units produced and it flew from 1960-ish to 2017. So well over half a century of flight, more than 50 years. And even though you or I are really not in the market to purchase either a 505 or a 206, we're gonna kind of carry this conversation like we were going to, like we were going to buy one. And whether the Bell 505 with its glass cockpit, its new, clean, fun design with all its bells and whistles is better than the time-tested Bell 206 with over half a century of flight time used by many industries and loved by many pilots, whether the 505 is really a replacement for the 206. So the Bell 206 was originally designed for the US Army. They needed an LOH or a light observation helicopter and Bell came up with this model. Its original military name was the YOH-4, but unfortunately the US Army did not choose the YOH-4 and Bell was thinking of what to do. So they kind of redesigned it, remodeled it, and turned it into a civilian helicopter, branding it as the Bell 206. It's really interesting that the Army didn't pick the YOH-4 and after it was redesigned and rebranded, the Army was like, oh, that one? Yeah, we'll take it with its new design. So the YOH-4 helicopter that the US Army didn't want got rebranded and redesigned, turned into the Bell 206, which further turned into the OH-58 Kiowa. So there were tons of versions and different iterations of this helicopter. They took the original model and they stretched it, turning it into the Long Ranger, giving it seven seats. They further came out with uh, the Twin Ranger, uh, yeah, I think it's called the Twin Ranger. Let me check real quick. Yeah, the Twin Ranger, which is a twin engine, dual turbine engine helicopter. Um, and then they came out with the 407, the Bell 407, which is a four bladed helicopter, but it keeps pretty much the same body as the Long Ranger. And so if you are following in the helicopter world at all, you'll know how popular the 206 is, how popular the 407 is, probably the most popular helicopter in the world. I think the 206 actually was the most popular helicopter ever sold. This family of helicopters, very popular. And so the 206 was used in many fields specifically really used in the utility field, um, power line and pipeline patrol, used by lots of law enforcement agencies, used by fire departments, um, news gathering, super versatile, used in lots of areas of helicopter applications, and I would venture to say it's probably the most successful and popular helicopter Ever. But the question is, why did Bell feel the need to upgrade it? If it was going so good, why change something that's not really broken? And they kind of did that. I mean, it ran from the 1960s to 2017. That's a really long lifespan of a single body type of a helicopter. But like all good things, there needed to be upgrades. And actually, when I say that out loud, it, it doesn't really sound right. There didn't really need to be upgrades, but they did make upgrades and their upgraded version was the 505. So the Bell 505 kept a lot of the same things that were in the 206. It's got that same rotor system, the two blades, it's got the same transmission, the same gearboxes, the same tail rotor drive shaft, the same tail rotor assembly. They kept a lot the same. But where we have to talk about where they made a massive difference was the instrument panel. And this is just my personal opinion, but I think the 206's instrument panel, it looks a little bit cluttered and there's a lot going on. And what they did in the 505 is they totally simplified it down to two 10.4 inch Garmin G1000 displays. Also known as a glass cockpit, there's no uh, steam gauges like you're used to seeing in an aircraft. They're just these big displays. And I mean, these things are wildly powerful. You've got all the engine parameter information that you need. You can set that up on one screen. On the other screen, you can pull up maps, uh, air spaces, frequencies, all of that. 
but what's really impressive that they have is synthetic vision. Synthetic vision, as the name implies, so let's say, heaven forbid, you do fly yourself into clouds, into instrument meteorological conditions, this synthetic vision is pretty much gonna give you what you would have outside. So you have attitude information, you've got terrain information, you have traffic information. You pretty much have an outside view while you're in the clouds. Now this isn't saying that you're going to totally eliminate um, IMC crashes and crashes because you lose spatial awareness, but it is really helping the pilot out. And I mean, I've never flown this helicopter, but I could see that like if you fly this helicopter every day and you're used to looking at that synthetic vision while you're in VFR conditions, so you know what pitch looks like, you know what, you know what the helicopter looks like in VFR conditions on that screen. As soon as you punch in, it's going to be different and you're going to have, you may go spatial, but you're you're much better prepared with that screen. And the question is, could Bell have just added this technology into a 206 and just make a new iteration of it? And I think yes, but I think they wanted to rebrand and I think they wanted something new. But besides all of the cool glass cockpit, the Garmin G1000s, they also added a FADEC. And FADEC stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. Basically what FADEC is, is like, Full authority digital engine control. It's what you have in your car. When you turn the key on your car, if you've got like, I don't know, something relatively new within the last 10 or 15 years, you don't do the ignition process. You don't mess with the mixtures. Um, you just turn the key and it starts up by itself. Basically, that's what Fadic does in the helicopter. You basically turn the key, you turn the switch, turn the knob, and the helicopter kind of starts firing up on its own. Unlike the 206 where you have to start it and then you have to slowly introduce fuel and be super careful that you don't over temp the engine on startup, this FADEC does it by itself, which is incredibly valuable. And this really inspires me and makes me happy because as helicopter pilots, we're really concerned about like robots and autonomous vehicles taking over our jobs. And can a robot or a system be a better pilot than a human? I don't think that's really the question. I think humans are always gonna be there, but we have all this great technology that is going to assist us. Like FADEC, an automatic computer that does the startup sequence so that me, like some dumbass pilot, doesn't just accidentally screw up a very expensive engine and have the helicopter out for weeks. So FADIC is cool, the glass cockpit is cool, but the interior is really interesting. You know, the 206 had a fine interior, but the Bell 505 increased the cabin volume and what they also did is they added more space above the head of the pilot. So if you're a tall pilot, I mean, that comes as like a welcomed gift so that you're not banging your head into things. But what I really like is in the back seat, there's only those three seats, but they're actually positioned a little bit higher than the front passenger seat so they get a better view. You can actually take those back three seats, you can fold them up, and tons of cargo space. So this really becomes a cargo helicopter, not just a passenger helicopter, but you can even take those seats out. Also on the front seats, they're on rails. So you can slide the chair up and back forth for more positioning comfort. What they did is they wanted a new helicopter that they learned a ton from the 206 from. So much information and really just put all of that into the 505. And they did pretty damn good. You know, this 505 can do the same things that the 206 can do. Law enforcement, definitely. Firefighting, sure, it's got external load capabilities. Electronic news gathering, definitely. EMS, yeah. So if we're being honest, it's a great helicopter. Now, so here's where I may differ from you a little bit. I think if I had to rate the 206 on a scale from zero to 10, I would say the 206 is about a nine. Pretty damn close to being perfect. Now, if I had to rate the 505, I would, on, on that same scale, zero to 10, I would say it's probably an eight. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with the 505. I mean, it's a beautiful helicopter. It does pretty much everything the 206 does. It does a lot of those things better. But just my opinion when I think about it, the 505 looks kind of childish and whimsical and it just looks kind of soft versus the 206. Like I look at that thing and I'm like, that's a mean, real tough helicopter. And the 505, it just got like kind of softer edges. And don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful helicopter. It just doesn't look as fierce and tough. And I don't feel like it's as fierce and tough as 
the, the 206. You know, but that's just my opinion. You may differ from me. You may say the 505 looks way meaner and uh, can do a lot more than the 206, but I think the 206 is really good. I don't think the 206 is dying out anytime soon, and I think the 505 will continue to climb in popularity. I mean, and the 505 has just been an incredible success already since it's come out, and I understand why. You know, if there was like a personal helicopter that I'd want, I think I'd want a 505. Check out my video right here where I compared the Robinson R66, which is a turbine helicopter, versus the Bell 505. And I, I think, I definitely believe the 505 is a better helicopter. And if I was going to have a personal helicopter, it would be the 505. I mean, it just, it's beautiful. Like for me, I feel like the 505 is like, a uh, Tesla, it's definitely a Tesla. Like a uh, new, interesting, exciting, beautiful, versus like a 206 is, I don't know, like the 206 strikes me as like a Ford F-150. Just the most classic, American, strong, nice, get the job done type of helicopter. So if you agreed with me, smash that like button. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these two helicopters. I think the 505 is great. The 206 is pretty damn good as well. Um, I don't think they really necessarily needed it, but I see the advancements really helps the pilot out. That FADEC is super great. Uh, the glass cockpit really gives the pilot great situational awareness, taking the seats out in the back, definitely useful, really increases the capability of the helicopter but the 206 is really damn good. But let me know your comments down below what you think about these two helicopters. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.